So that is the overall goal of a dialogue, and that is to understand and to be understood. All right. So there are a couple of guidelines that need to be that you should adhere to if that's the goal that you are, you know, aiming for. So number one, in a healthy dialogue, avoid generalizations and exaggerations. When you are communicating with your spouse, avoid exaggerating and avoid generalizing. All right. And there's there's nothing that kills a seemingly healthy dialogue like generalizations and gross exaggerations. They tend to demonstrate that the desire to get one's point across is far more important than returning to the pre-conflict state of the marriage. Right. Generalizations may include phrases such as you always do this. You always say this. You do this all the time. And that's a that's an exaggeration because nobody does it all the time. There are gaps in between when the person does it and the person doesn't do it, right? You never do this, right? And this is something that is characteristic of women, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that um that he saw the hellfire and the vast majority of the people in the hellfire were women. And he said that the reason why was because they are unappreciative of their husbands and they curse their husbands. He said a man can spend his entire life doing nothing but right by the woman. And the moment he does one thing that she disapproves of, she says, what? You have never done any good for me. Exaggeration. Gross exaggeration. You have never done any good for me. Right. And you find yourself saying things like that often. You might want to, you know, reevaluate, you know, your, you know. Because the whole purpose of exaggerating and generalizations is because you want to get your point across. You want your point to be understood clearly. And the thing is, is that you don't have to exaggerate and you don't have to use these type of generalizations. Um, something that my ex did is so hard to have a conversation with. Someone. It is, but you have to train them. You can't, everybody is not, everybody is not equipped to, you know, understand this. You have to prep. Uh, there may be some people listening here now that may be guilty of this. You, you're guilty of this doing this, of using gross exaggerations and generalizations. But now that you're sitting in the class and it's bringing, it's being brought to your attention, you're kind of realizing now how, dangerous this is and how detrimental it is to a conversation so everybody is not equipped to have that you know to be able to understand this they have to first you got to first walk them to the water you can't just force somebody head down in the water and make them drink you got to walk them to the water they got to be able to see the water from the pasture they got to be able to be thirsty as they're walking towards the water so that when they finally get to the water they are appreciative of the the cold drink that they are about to receive you can't just force somebody's head into water naturally when you force the person is going to respond they're going to react it's going to be a reactionary you know uh, uh behavior so when you say to your spouse, you know, you should stop using, you know, exaggerations and, you know, that's the first time they're hearing about this. They're, they're not, they're going to react. They're not going to receive. <laughs> they have to first understand how this is dangerous. How this ruins the opportunity for healthy dialogue. I'm guilty of being too black or too, too black, too white. Uh, have to try to stop and be more empathetic, sympathetic and understanding. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's called empathic listening. There are different types and levels to listening. Right. Empathic listening, you know, just listening to the person, putting yourself in the person's shoes, trying to really understand what the person is saying to you. I would love to learn how to train someone not to speak that way because it's frustrating. It is frustrating. It is frustrating. Wallahi, I, I, I kid you not, even for myself. When I hear somebody start to exaggerate or, you know, throw things in there, and, you know, to kind of like make their story seem like it's more believable. And it's just like, you don't have to do that, man. Like, I got your point. 
You know, the scholars, they have the saying, al-ishara, that the intelligent person, all you have to do is indicate. They get it. You don't, you don't have to generalize. You don't have to exaggerate. You don't have to, you don't have to do that to get me to understand your point. Like, I'm not incompetent. I'm not a child. I, I get it. I, I get your point. You know, but when you start throwing, uh, in writing, uh, what do they call that in writing? Um, I'm forgetting the word. Hyperbole. No. Uh, when you when you add stuff to a story to make it, you know, make it more than what it really was. Uh, I'm forgetting what it's called. Authors use it a lot in their in their writings. Tall tales. No, it's a certain word. It'll it'll come to me. Hyperbole. No, no, no. It, it, it's a. I think it starts with a V. Anyway, it'll come to me. But writers use it a lot when they're trying to kind of dress their story up to make it look like it's more than what it really is. Um, and people do that when they talk because they're trying to get a certain point across. But you want to avoid, you know, exaggerations. So when a person so and I mean, we want to teach, we want to lead by example. So we don't want to do that. We don't want our spouses doing that to us. Then we don't want to do it to our spouses. So instead of saying you always do this or you always say that. All right. What's another way of saying that rephrasing that? What's another way of, uh, to rephrase that? Often. You do that often. You do that a lot. Right? You do that a lot. You do that often. Right? So, and, and that leaves just a little gap, a little room to know that there's, and they're, they don't do it all the time, but they do do it. They do it more than, you know, more than they should anyway. Right? So you want to avoid doing that, all right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructs us in the Quran, O you who believe, say a word that is straight to the point, right? It's hyperboles and, and oversimplifications, uh, yes, all right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O you who believe, fear Allah and say a word that is straight to the point. Be straight to the point, meaning don't exaggerate. Number two, avoid cutting the person off before they complete their thought. So you want to have healthy dialogue. Number one, don't exaggerate. Don't use gross generalizations. Don't exaggerate. Say the word straight to the point. Say what it is. All right. We, we're trying to get the person to see how important this is to us. So then we start to dress it up. We start to make it more than what it really is to try to get our point across. All right. But in the process of that, you're making dialogue, you're inhibiting dialogue because there are some people who are very sensitive to those exaggerations. And the moment you start to use them, you lose them. The moment you start to exaggerate and use generalizations, it's like, all right, call us. I, I can't even talk to you because now you I do this all the time, all the time. Like, it's like, come on, man, like leave a little bit of room like you're exaggerating. Number two, avoid cutting the other person off before they complete their thought. There's nothing more frustrating than trying to find the right words to convey the exact emotions that you are experiencing in a heated conversation, right? And, and there's nobody who knows that more than women. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes women as creatures who can barely express themselves when they are angry and upset, Right? I will make you nashau fil hiliati wa huwa fil khisami ghayr mubin. Right? Is then the one who was brought up in trinkets and unable to give a clear account in a dispute to be associated with Allah? As they used to say that girls were, you know, the, um, the, the some of the uh, gods were females and they were, they were gods. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making a clear distinction that you know, the female and the male are not even the same. So how are you comparing the female to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? <laughs> I'm in the right course. I just wish my people were with us. Yeah. Allah knows where to place his message. Everything is not for everybody. <laughs> so avoid cutting the other person off, right? 
Uh, this is this is your investment in yourself. You know, a lot of times we in, invest in courses like this and we wish that our spouses or we wish other people, you know, in our lives could, you know, digest this. But this is, you know, you have to be of a certain ilk to be able to pay for a course and invest in yourself. You you have to be in a certain place in your life, you know, to 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 do this. And everybody is not there. We wish we wish. I wish that I could teach something like this in public, but I can't. Everybody is not there. I would do more time explaining than I would actually teaching the course. All right. But it is very frustrating to be in a heated argument, heated conversation and trying to get your point across to somebody, trying to find the right words to convey to the person. That's frustrating enough then for you to finally find the right word to say or the right words to say to your, to your spouse and then to have them cut you off mid-conversation. All right? Not to mention that it's, it's a dismissal of what you're trying to say because the person is com repeatedly interrupting you uh, because they see that their viewpoint is more important than yours. All right. So be mindful of cutting the person off. Ask permission to interject. Say, hey, can I can I say something here? Can I say something here? The person may say, wait, no, let me finish what I'm saying. OK, cool. Ask permission. All right. Number three, listen to understand, not to respond. All right. Brian H. McHill's, McGill said one of the most sincerest forms of respect is actually listening to what the other person has to say. When two people are trying to communicate their emotions and individual experiences about a particular situation or incident, their hope is to be understood by the other person, not dismissed as an invalid or as invalid or as an anomaly. Right. Sometimes people listen just enough to develop a rebuttal while the crux of what is being communicated goes clearly over their head. There is nothing that is more frustrating for me than for me to try to tell you what I'm what I'm trying to convey to you, right? And you are rebutting what I'm saying, totally missing my point. It's just like there for me, there is nothing that is more frustrating than that. That I'm trying to say one thing, you you overtalk me clearly not listening to what I'm saying and you are trying to rebut what I'm saying, but your rebuttal is an indication that you didn't even understand what I was saying. It's just like, here you go trying to rebut what I'm saying, but you didn't even understand what I'm saying. You still don't even get what I'm trying to say to you because you weren't listening. Some people only listen enough just to develop a rebuttal, Right? Just like some people on social media, they only read the first sentence of a paragraph and they think that they understand what you're saying. And then they put a comment, long comment. And it's just like that went clearly over your head based upon your response. You clearly didn't know what I was talking about because you only read the first sentence so you could develop your rebuttal. You know, listen to understand not to respond. One of the most sincerest forms of respect is to actually listen to what the other person is saying. That's that's respect. And it's no coincidence that we have two ears and one mouth so that we can listen more than we respond. One of the main goals of communication is a deeper emotional connection. Nobody knows that better than women. You guys communicate to connect emotionally. Men, we communicate to solve problems for the most part. But if one spouse is in the habit of responding without listening attentively, all connection is lost and the words being conveyed have no power or relevance whatsoever. So very important.